named Sal. He said, well, I'll tell you what. I was walking one day years ago across a field, stumped my toe on something, looked down, and found a treasure. It was the kingdom of God, and I've been hugging myself ever since. I want to tell you, whatever it is, the, the nearest to a scriptural definition, as much as you can describe it or as little, this is a good one, Romans 14, 17, which says the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. It's not mundane stuff. It's not religious ritual. It is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So we're going to, we're facing a study of the kingdom. About 20 years ago, uh, I, was, I was quite happy in the Christian life. I had discovered many things. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but <clears throat> I learned like this. When I got in difficulty, the Lord, I felt, arranged it. And I could learn something in that about how God operates and, and build a, around it a thought system that would make it easier to live the Christian life. And uh, I'd, I'd studied and studied the Holy Spirit and asked him to fill me and guide me and empower me. And I, I knew about the exchange life. I'd studied the, the deeper life. I'd studied Paul. And, and generally on these subjects, I'd, I'd write a book. I, I learned that every Christian has a right to be in victory over the devil all the time. And uh, I wrote a book on victory over the devil. Had a full-time prayer in the room with me while I was writing the book. And I would write these things. And uh, I would, uh, if you had looked at the, at the canvas of my theology, uh, pretty good theology, but it was scattered. It was uh, soteriology, the doctrine of salvation, and, and uh, uh, bibliology, the study of the Bible, how it got to us, and why it's so miraculous, and the study of the spirit, pneumatology, and and uh, a lot of other ologies, and all of them I appreciated and was driven to seek to live better for the Lord. But one day, and this is my testimony, the Lord slammed into the center of, of my uh, pictured theology, the kingdom of God. And all of a sudden, I saw it. I, I can't describe that, I wish I could. And I began to seek what I saw. I'm going to spend a, a time uh, in the next couple of days in these sessions on how we seek the kingdom. The reason people do not seek it is they've never seen it. When they see it, they want to seek what they see. And I'll, I'll not get deeply into that until later. but. Uh, I, I'm a seeker of the kingdom. I'm unashamedly and don't believe it's pride at all. I'm a kingdom man and you're a kingdom person. I love the name Kingdom Life University. Amen. And I was looking at it and I said, well, that's the university I've been in for 20 years. <laughs> Just didn't know it. Now, had a name for it. And I love what I know about Kingdom Life University and want to congratulate you, her students there all over the world. So I want to bear my intentions. I, I want to be right out front with you. I am not interested in your going away loaded with information. I could do that. But it would be worthless unless and until you discover the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit is the only one who can discover it to you. And I have some awfully good news for you. Whatever the state of the church you feel is, is observable, let me tell you something. The good news is, Matthew 24, 14, listen to this. And the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to every ethnic group, every village, every, every land, every island. The kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached as a witness to all nations. Folks, that is happening right now. Now the reason you don't see it 
is it's happening more over yonder than in America. We have it a little too easy and are rather impressed with our theology. Now, I, I, I love theology and I, I love theologians. But I, I've heard the definition that really, really uh, gives me a buzz. You know what a happy Christian is? A happy Christian is one who discovered Jesus before he, before he found a theologian. <laughs> and uh, I, I just believe we need to love Jesus. The learning of theology does not deliver you, nor is it supposed to, from knowing Jesus and walking in the kingdom. So this is my intention for you. I want you somewhere in the process to get it. He said, what are you talking about? I don't know. But I know when it happens, you'll know and I'll know. One of my sons, and my sons, I'll just share with you my legacy. About 10 years ago, I was asked in a meeting, and I didn't have an answer. He said, what, what's your legacy, Brother Jack? A legacy? He said, yeah, what, what you're going to leave when you go? I said, go? I, I, I don't plan to go anytime soon. But you need a legacy. And I said, Lord, what is my legacy? Let me share with you what my legacy is. And I'm having such a time. My son works for me to help me manage and fulfill my destiny. And this is it. I plan to leave sons and daughters, by the way, who have sons and daughters, who have sons and daughters, who have sons and daughters for the coming years until Jesus comes, mm -hmm. who are discovering the kingdom, declaring the kingdom, and demonstrating the yeah. kingdom. And you know what? God is doing it with my sons and daughters. I get emails all the time, and they're discovering, they're beyond me. I want them to get beyond. I live for them to go beyond me in kingdom knowledge. And I long for every one of you and every one of you who are watching. I long for us to discover the kingdom, and doubtless many of you have. And if you have, then there is something wild about your passion. There is something unsearchable about the riches, but you're celebrating them. And, and you will have a helpless inexorable excitement. I don't know what those big words mean, but they sound good. So uh, I, I want you to get excited. Oh, okay. Amen. Yes. Yes. We got a little ways to go, but uh, I, I really want you to get excited. I, I have an excitement within me that I can't describe. I can't. I, I was standing the other day, just standing, not, not being engaged in much at all. I was just with somebody, and we were looking over the, the street ahead of us, and I said to myself, I think I may be the most excited old man in the world. I think. You know why? Because somewhere God was merciful enough to take the wrap off of this wonderful thing called the kingdom of God. Now let me just give a passing definition. It can't be described. The Bible, just in that one word I stated, just sort of says it. The, the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. But the kingdom of God in its larger definition is the rule of God over everything, everywhere, and everybody for all time and eternity. Now look, if you can get that under your skin, if you can get that wedged into your brain, God rules. You'll never have a bad day. You may have a bad second, but the second you turn to the kingdom and see this, my God reigns, you will ditch your sadness and depression. And, and I just, I believe that. I believe we'd have more people saved accidentally than we're now having on purpose if God's people could get excited as excitement deserves, as the picture of the kingdom deserves. God rules. Listen to me. ISIS doesn't have a chance. Neither do the Democrats or Republicans. God rules. 
right. Congress, House of Representatives. <laughs> no, God rules. Can you get it? Might help you to say it with me. God rules. God rules. He really, 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 really does. Now, I'm asked the question when I say that, well, can you explain something to me? If God rules, why is the earth in the mess it's in? You know my answer? That's the reason it's in a mess. The ruler has given a free will to mankind and they've chosen against him, but once they make that choice, they run out of choices and God's judgment has to fall. And judgment is he has to absent himself. He rules, but he chooses not to control the will of man. Does that make any sense? Well, it would kind of help if you'd help me a little. Those can't who are watching uh, later. If you just nod your head, that means, yeah. Or just maybe slip and say, amen. And uh, I was going to say, we're timed here. But most of the time I say to people, if, if you're just egg me on a little like, like you half believe what I'm saying. I'll finish early. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And always get, a, always get a heavy amen there. I was preaching in a, a church of color in, uh, in California, Northern California, Central California. And uh, I mean, they were, they were excited. You didn't have to say much to get them excited. And uh, I, I preached on uh, Moses and the Rod. And uh, I, generally that sermon, fully preached, takes about an hour and a half. And uh, they, they began to amen me and praise the Lord. And well, is that so? Wow. And, and I finished that sermon, said everything I ever say three times, and finished that sermon in 30 minutes. <laughs> now that's, that's how it affects when you get a little excited about what you hear. See, I know what I say is true. Okay. So this is my goal, this is my intention, to so impress you with the glory and the repleteness, the completeness of the kingdom that you determine it's worth your investigation. It is worth your passionate search and begin that search. And if I can leave you, not, not necessarily impressed with the sequence of the messages or the, the authority of them or the scholarly sound of them, you, you may miss that altogether. But if you catch the kingdom, I wish it were a virus and I had, the, I had that to infect you. I would infect you quickly. And I would pray you never get over it. Incurable virus of the kingdom. So that's, that's what I'm after, okay? So you don't, you don't have to watch. You don't have to come back uh, if, if you don't want that. But uh, you're going to get it. One of the greatest thrills I hear. I was talking to one of my sons. He'd been a son for a number of years. And uh, I, he, just, he was spellbound. I got in what I call one of my kingdom fits. Uh, one, one, of my, one of my kingdom episodes in which I just opened my mouth. And I, I hear things I didn't ever say before. And it thrilled me. And uh, I learn while I'm talking about the kingdom. I get more excited. And, uh, and, and he said, I've never heard that in my life. And he was a preacher and he was a, an effective missionary. And he said, Brother Jack, I, I've never heard that. I said, well, I haven't heard some of it myself. And, and I like it. He said, he said before long, he said, I believe I've got it. I said, uh, I doubt it. But when you get it, you'll know it because all of a sudden, sometime, perhaps a little before or a little after, you seize it. It seizes you. And it will never let go. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about a person. I'm talking about the doings of God. I'm talking about the realm that God controls. The kingdom. The kingdom. And so, I'm out to get you unapologetically. I don't care about impressing you. I don't really uh, that give me a buzz at all. I want you to get it. If I can plant a seed that impregnates your mind and you get pregnant with the kingdom of God, I've fulfilled my purpose. That's what turns me on. 
So I want to walk before you several key verses that will be throughout uh, the, the time of our study. And uh, I, I read from the, uh, from the Broadman uh, uh, version, the translation of the Bible. It's called the Christian Standard Version of the Bible. And uh, I, I find it very helpful. You know, the only thing that bothers me about translations is I don't know which one to memorize. I inevitably fall back on the King James. Yes. Amen. And uh, uh, so I, I just let you know I'm not, uh, I'm not gone heretic and made my own Bible. So let me, let me just give you some passages that are very familiar to you. There is a damage we call the deadening familiarity with the divine. We've read the Bible, we've memorized it, and we just scoot across it, and we never grow into the depths of it if all we do is quote it. And uh, so, uh, let me make this prophecy. I'm not a prophet or the son of a prophet. I doubt if you could find a prophet in my family tree, but sometimes I prophesy. And this is one prophecy. The greatest truths that we're going to discover, you and I, all of us, if we study, are going to be found just beneath the surface of what we thought we knew sufficiently enough about. Mm -hmm. You think you understand salvation. So when somebody says salvation, you say, yeah, it's good, I'm saved. When you look into it, relating it to the kingdom, mm -hmm. you're gonna find what it means. So let me, let me just say this. Anything you believe for its fullest meaning waits on your discovery of the kingdom. Yes. You'll not understand the church and will make all kinds of mistake about doing church and being church and promoting church and growing church until you link it to its place in the kingdom. One of the great tragedies that's occurred today is that we have likened or made the same as the church and the kingdom. They're not, they're not the same, not the same. Jesus mentioned the kingdom 134 times. He mentioned the church three times. Now that wasn't because he didn't like the church. The church didn't exist then. And we've got to remember that the, the kingdom is eternal and the church is timed. Mm -hmm. The church is the whole, or the kingdom is the whole, the church is a part. And once that doctrine, whether it be of the church or grace or atonement or eschatology or any other ology, when the kingdom invades that and it becomes hyphenated, kingdom theology, kingdom eschatology, kingdom atonement, kingdom evangelism, kingdom five, five-fold ministry, kingdom ministry, then the power comes and the unity comes. I'll tell you one more thing. I'm not sure I could find a scripture for it. I don't, I, I believe all the scripture. But I find some things the scripture doesn't say that, that are just as true. They'll never get the same level of the scriptures, but I believe that until anything we believe is baptized in the kingdom, it is unprotected. Mm. The enemy can drive it to an unsafe depth and people go to seed on it because they haven't related it to the kingdom. Let me tell you what, show you what happens. Uh, we will take uh, praise and get into praise and do tapes and CDs and all of that on praise until we're praising praise. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about grace until we are almost in greasy grace. Anything goes unprotected by kingdom truth. I felt the air suck out of the room, didn't it? Anybody? Huh? Folks, the kingdom is not the church and the church is not the kingdom. But they are part as the whole and the part. 
I will deal in a later session with, with three uh, things I've learned in studying the kingdom. One is that it's a mystery and we'll enlarge on that. The other thing is it, it, it is the whole. W-H-O-L-E. It is the whole. What do you mean by that? I mean it's everything. What do you mean by that? Well, there's nothing apart from the kingdom that is a part of reality. It is the sum total of all reality. It is uh, the, the universe, seen and unseen. It is the powers of gravity and the powers that, that are going through the earth with uh, hurricane force and more, traveling at the speed of light, energy, matter, life, light, time, all of that. The kingdom includes it all, and without the kingdom nothing exists. Subtitle of my book, the title is uh, Cosmic Initiative. And, and that's on the basis of the fact that first of all it's cosmic. And secondly, it is God's. And God declared an initiative from the start. No, not from the start, because there wasn't any start. God has just always been what he is. He didn't have to start, he was there. He is the only one who can say, I am. He can never say, I was. Doesn't have to say, I will be. He is the I am. And the kingdom has always been God in action, God in his wholeness, God working. And uh, the, uh, so, so the next thing is, um, the whole is always greater than the sum of its individual parts. Now, a psychiatrist came up with that, and, uh, and it stands as an axiom of science. Remember, the whole is always greater than the sum of its individual parts. So, we haven't seen all that we can see in a part until we see the whole of the kingdom. I'm not talking about understanding it. I'm talking about looking at it and being blown away by its immensity. It's, it's infinity. It's beyond understanding. And then there's the issue of, of uh, giving ourselves such to the kingdom that we begin to exercise all the results of the kingdom, all the uh, collateral blessings of being kingdomized. I, uh, I love to make new words. And, uh, and try to explain them. I love the word kingdomize. When you began to see the kingdom, the kingdom enters you just as you've been in it all along. And you began to be kingdomized. For instance, the kingdom demands your time. But God just doesn't take away stuff. He gives you such in the kingdom as you seek it first. Mm -hmm. That you become less and less and less interested in the things that take your time. I'm not saying they're sin. But I'm learning this. I, I like to watch the news. I love to stay abreast with what's going on. But I'm so tired of what's going on, I'm, I'm thinking of giving up news altogether. Because you know what? It isn't news. It's old. It's boring. And God doesn't want us bored. And nobody ever found the kingdom and died of boredom. And nobody ever followed Jesus and died of boredom. You cannot, you cannot find one, one report on any of Jesus' followers dying from boredom. They might have died by violence. They might have died boiling in oil or hanging on a cross or hanged or shot or whatever, but no boredom. Boredom is of the devil. No boredom in the kingdom. So, uh, these are the scriptures I want to walk by you. Matthew 3, verse 1. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent! For the kingdom of heaven 
is near. We will look into the matter of repentance. Repentance has gotten a bad rap mm -hmm. in our day. God wants you to repent. Oh, no, again? No. We get to repent. You know what that is? Learning a new way of thinking. That's it. Learning a new way of thinking. Rewiring your mind to where you can think. One of my sons right now, his wife is a doctor in psychiatry. He is a counselor and a brilliant fellow. No telling what his IQ is. He's just become a son a few months ago. He's sending me stuff on the mind and the kingdom. How kingdom thinking rewires, reroutes thinking. And repentance is simply allowing God to change your mind. When you report to God that you believe your mind needs rewiring on some things because you come up with stinking thinking. Uh, and, and I'm blown away. I, I read a 12 page paper that he sent me on the email on my way to, to Texas from Florida last week. Blew me away. I, I want to blow you away. I want, to, I want God to blow you away. I want God to rewire your mind. I, I, want to, I, I want Him to wire your electrical circuits. You know the brain operates on seven one hundredths of a volt. Hmm. And I'm, I'm asking God to ramp that up to about a hundred and twenty just every once in a while. Just to get your attention. Say. I wear a heart device. And uh, I was sitting at 530 a, month, a few months ago working on my book, really avid. And all of a sudden I began to feel a little bit uh, strange. And all of a sudden my device fired. Now, if, you've, if you have one and it's fired, you leave no mystery about uh, what I'm talking about. Amen. It fired. It fired. And uh, so the protocol is uh, you, you uh, do everything you can think of to head off a possible heart attack. You take another aspirin, you drink water, you don't lay down, and so on. So I read all the directions and uh, then went the next day, as you're commanded to do, to have a check and see what happened. So the man looked at it, checked me a minute. He said, well, you're right, it went off at exactly that time. And uh, I said, what does that mean? He said, it's working. <laughs> You're alive. And so I, I, want, I want you to have that kind of shock. Just maybe less, a little less. <coughs> Would you be interested in that? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Would you out there be interested in that? Good. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the next passage. By the way, what John, uh, what Matthew said regarding John the Baptist and what he said. That's repeated word for word in uh, 423. And when Jesus said, uh, uh, repent for the king, Jesus said it, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then in, uh, in Matthew 6, we are informed of how Jesus told us to pray. And, and you know, I'll have to confess to you that I've been preaching for a long number of years and I have the habit, and I believe you do too, of reading passages and believing only as much as you've understood before. Mm. You haven't dwelt on it. And I, I, do, do you realize that he is giving us the text of the greatest prayer ever prayed and say, y you can pray like this. I mean, the fact that the God of heaven has put into our hands a tool, a gift called prayer, where we can move heaven to earth. Mm -hmm. Now, contrary to prevailing opinion, Jesus did not come to take us to heaven only. He came that he might bring heaven to the earth yeah. through us. See, that's the kingdom. And I'm excited about that. So give me some reasons why I shouldn't be excited if you're nervous about me. Now, let me, let me come to another one. And there are many others such uh, that I call axioms in the study of the kingdom. But 633 says this. He talks about the heathen working for certain things, seeking where they're going to live, what they're going to wear, and, uh, and uh, what they're going to eat. 
He said, these are the things the heathen seek. Not, not anything wrong with it. But if you stop there and find only what you seek for, you've missed the main thing. One of my preacher friend's theme of life is, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. Mm -hmm. uh, he and I happen to differ on what's the main thing. But the main thing is the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is the only thing. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So this is what Jesus said. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Now I believe in, in context that refers to exactly what he was saying before that. Uh, you seek uh, a place to live, you seek food to eat, you seek raiment for your body. Those three things. That's what you're working for. Isn't that exciting? You get your clothes, you get your food, you get a place to live. Well, what are you going to do next year? Well, I'm going to work. Why? To get a salary. Why? So I can wear clothes and eat food and live in a house. Wonderful. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> Could we go beyond that? This is what Jesus meant in the greater context. He was saying, listen, knowing me is more than raiment, more than food, more than a house. It is life, kingdom life, under the ruler in heaven. That's it. And so he says, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. I don't care what you're seeking. But if it's legal and God, you find it by finding the kingdom. And well, you've read about the seven princes of serendip, out of which came the word serendipity. You find, you find all of these things completed while you're seeking something else. And if you'll seek the greater, he'll give you the lesser. But if you seek the, the lesser and, and disregard the greater, you've missed it all. You can't even enjoy the lesser. So those are the passages that I really want you to nail to the wall of your heart. Um, repent. Because the kingdom of heaven is near at hand. You know what that means? within reach at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the most important thing today in your life. The kingdom of heaven is here to be understood and to press into and to press into you. The kingdom is here to seek. And then he gives us prayer. The gift. I, I appreciated uh, what uh, Dr. Brandt said today. The, the great key to the kingdom is the human body. It is the means of expressing the nature of the kingdom. If we have the kingdom in us, Christ is in us, therefore the kingdom is in us. We are filled with the kingdom. And the more we become aware of it, the more conscious we are of being filled, and the more the world will find benefit by our presence. Imagine walking into a room and the the whole culture of the room changes. Right. Why? Because the kingdom of God just walked in. Yes. And there is energy in the atmosphere. Is that worth being excited about or have I gone crazy? No. <laughs> hey. So I, I, I want you to get those several things. In the next session, I'm, uh, I'm going to talk about what in the world is going on. And I think you'll be interested to find out. It's not what I think. It's not what you think. But if you'll find out what is really happening, what is really going on, I think you're going to be inevitably happy. Inevitably joyful. So I want to pray that God will fix these things solidly in your heart. And uh, we will gather for the next session. Father, in Jesus' name, validate everything that has been said that is validatable. Don't let us ever escape it. Nail it to our inside soul. 
Thank you that when we began to seek the kingdom, the king and the kingdom seeks us, seek us. May we be found. And let the kingdom become paramount. And let us find depth in praying, more excitement than ever before. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, in me as it is in heaven. Amen.